Number 10, abandoned whiskey. All right, here we go. Part one and two of this list was pretty dark, so we'll kick this part three off with 10-year-old McKinley whiskey. An explorer found the crates in the hut of Ernest Shackleton. Inside were these frozen bottles of scotch, all the way from 1907. This may be the best discovery on this list, but it's been locked up, of course, obviously, such a historical find. But you'll be happy to know a sample was given to Scottish distiller White and McKay. Yeah, they're currently studying this recipe to try and bring it back to life. Imagine seeing Ernest Shackleton's whiskey in stores on shelves. I'd be like, oh, what? Okay, debit. Number nine, surgical notebook. Whenever explorers find notebooks, I'm so interested right off the bat. Maybe I've played too much Zelda, I don't know, but notebooks feel very national treasure to me when you find them. This notebook here once belonged to a surgeon, believe it or not. It's over 100 years old and it was found in a frozen hut in Antarctica and the owner was George Levick. He was a photographer and of course a surgeon who traveled with the last expedition of Robert Scott. This expedition was from 1910 to 1913. Now the book itself was completely frozen and the bindings were completely toast, but the parts that they can read today is pretty historical. You can still read descriptions of photos that George took at Cape Adair. Like his first observation, all those notes that he took down, we can still read those, so it's amazing. Imagine in a hundred years you find a notebook and it's just a bunch of like crazy S's that we used to draw back in school, like those pointy, like one of these, hang on. This is Disney Channel, the guy would be like, he nailed it, that was perfect. Number eight, the Glacier Girl. Before you get worried, this next one is a plane, not a woman. I got your back. A P-23 aircraft was discovered in Greenland surrounded in ice. Now this was during World War II in July 1946 when six P-38 fighter planes were ordered to make an emergency landing in Greenland due to, you know, lousy weather conditions and of course, low visibility. The crew was saved, but the lockhead had to be abandoned, sadly. Never to be seen again for 50 years. It was then dug out of 264 feet of snow and ice and it took years to finally get this plane back in action. She's known as the Glacier Girl and in 2007, Lewis Energy CEO, Rodney Lewis, bought the plane. Number seven, million year old plant. Back in 2019 in, of course, Greenland, a preserved fossil of a million year old plant was discovered. We love it. This was under the ice near a secret Cold War military camp. Yeah, an ancient flower found at a Cold War military camp. What a headline that would be. In 1959, Project Iceworm was underway. Now, I mentioned that project on this channel here before, and that in itself is a pretty bizarre frozen adventure in history, okay? Eventually, the project was scrapped and it was abandoned. Now, cut to 2019, it was rediscovered, and scientists at the University of Vermont found parts of a million-year-old flower. Not what you'd expect to find under a secret Cold War base, you know? He's like, oh, it's uh, oh, it's kind of nice. The fragments were all so well preserved that it looked like the flower had died recently. Not, you know, a million years ago. Studying these plants can also provide clues on our future and where our current plants might end up. Number six. Three Inca mummies. Discovered by John Reinhardt on March 16, 1999, near the summit of La Lilico, so around 7,000 meters up in the sky. This is near Argentina and Chile borders. This is far away. Further studies found that they were most likely sacrificed all in the name of a religious Inca ritual around the year 1500. Yeah, so quite a while ago. They were found in a small opening less than two meters deep under the ground, so again, this discovery was shocking. They looked like they were just asleep, but in reality, they died sometime around the 1500s. They're some of the most well-preserved mummies in the world. They now rest at an exhibition at the Museum of High Altitude Archaeology in Salta, Argentina. So specific, Museum of High Altitude Archaeology. Number five, Allen Hill's Meteorite. Okay, this next one is literally out of this world, so buckle up. Back in December 1984, American meteor hunters discovered this fragment in Allen Hills, Antarctica. The meteor was appropriately named Allen Hills 84001, and this rock was speculated to come from Mars. And in 1996, a scientist claimed that he discovered bacteria from the microscopic fossils on the meteorite. Now this news of course spread very quickly and everybody started losing their goddamn minds. Bill Clinton even chimed in. He made a speech about possible discoveries in space, right? Everyone's freaking out. Could this be aliens? Yeah. The scientific community later said this was not the case after further studies, but hey, never say never. Feels like we're closer to finding life with James Webb right now, honestly. I'm, I'm afraid to hit refresh. It's like, here's 700 galaxies. You don't matter. I'm like, thanks, James. 
We love it, keep snapping those pics. Number four, Atsi the Iceman. Discovered in September 1991, this mummy was found on the border of Austria and Italy. He's Europe's oldest known natural mummy. Most of the 45 year old man from the Copper Age was left in rather great condition, surprisingly. A 5,000 year old man was found in ice, so, I hate to say this, but you lose this round, Captain America. I see you in the comments. I'm sorry, I had to I had to get you out of here one day. Before he passed away in the Italian Alps, Otzi had a number of health problems. He had arthritis, Lyme disease, he was lactose intolerant, which is just horrible. Thanks to science, we now know that Otzi, the Iceman, was sharpening his tools right before his untimely death. So he fought until the end. Number three, three kittens. Don't worry, they are all okay. Spoiler alert. I had to throw that in because, you know, I care about you. Back in 2020, an oil worker named Drayton Dewish found three kittens all frozen to the ground near Drayton Valley. Now, it was mid-January, everything is frozen. This was near an oil well that he'd been working at. On Facebook, they posted about how the three kittens were all males and they were all dewormed, and now they were all living under the same roof, much warmer with a happy family. So, happy ending, there we go. He got them out of the ice by using coffee to melt the ice. How amazing is that? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Coffee saves lives. That's it, double doubles. Ooh, every morning. I was frozen outside before, and then I was dethawed myself with a nice French vanilla. Number two, message in a frozen bottle. Okay, here we go. Now that song, message in a bottle, it's gonna be stuck in everyone's head watching this. Best song from Guitar Hero 2, hands down. That and Surrender by Cheap Trick. What a time, right? So fun. Anyways, back in 1959, back on track, a geologist named Paul Walker, great name, buried a message in a bottle. He wanted to make a lasting statement about climate change, so he put this frozen message underneath rocks near a glacier in 1959. And then cut to 2013, what do we find? Said, message in a bottle. The message inside was to measure the length from that point to the edge of a glacier, but by 2013, said glacier had shrunk down 200 feet. So the scientist really did show us. He was like, eh, trust me, in 50 years, I'm gonna get you with this. Imagine he put the wrong note in. They open it up, it just says milk, eggs, bread. Is this a grocery list? This is definitely a grocery list. God damn it. Number one, Ice Age art. Ancient artwork, this time from the Colombian Amazon. Thing is, unlike other drawings found in the ceilings of tombs, this canvas stretched about eight miles and it was all frozen. It was just a wasteland. This should have never been found. The paintings are even more impressive. They date back to 12,000 years ago. These were made near the end of the last ice age. Yeah, the end of the last ice age, we're doing doodles. Are you kidding me? I can't even go to the store if it's snowing out. I'm like, nah, I'm just gonna order in. Screw that. This guy's making art. Miles of art. These were found in 2017, but it was only last year where they went public with said findings. Those findings being paintings of elephants, massive sloths, horses from the Ice Age, snakes, birds, deer, etc. This is now one of the largest collections of rock art in South America. Yeah, is it pregnant women or the origins of the Ninja Turtles? Art, we don't know, couldn't tell you. Number 10, World War I soldiers. It was called a world war for a reason, as there seemed to be not a single patch of land that was untouched by blood and loss. They fought in the mud, the waters, and of course, the snow, resulting in fallen men being claimed by icy graves. Two Austrian soldiers were found in the village that saw the battle known as the White War. A part of World War I was fought on the Italian front in the Alpine region of Italy. The two soldiers were found after a glacier melted in a ski resort in Peo. Unbeknownst to the people seeking a fun vacation and an après ski was the bloody history of men who never made it home. Number 9. Lion Cubs Your thoughts may have jumped to picturing the odd image of African lions somehow playing in the snow, but not quite. Close, but not quite. This little cub was actually a cave lion cub found frozen in the northeastern region of Yakutia, Russia. What's even more sad is you can even see it resting its little head on its paws, only about one year old. But this isn't the first time this region has yielded a similar discovery. Prior to this cub, two more were found two years prior called Unia and Dina and were the first cave lions to ever be found. Both sets of remains date back to the Ice Age, or at least 12,000 years old. This species of cave lion went extinct over 10,000 years ago and researchers believe that these cubs died due to neglect. Either their mother passed away or they were trapped and left behind. But the most exciting thing about the most recent remains is that it could be used for cloning or it could be used to help complete the genome which is really exciting. Whether or not we'll actually clone them is still on the back burner. 
who knows. Number eight, green boots. Besides the mountain itself, green boots is one of the most famous and morbid discoveries on Mount Everest. The treacherous trek has claimed over 200 bodies of people who tried to say they'd accomplished the legendary feat of climbing Mount Everest. But none are as famous or as foreboding as green boots. His name was Se Wong Pal Jor, but most know him as green boots. For nearly 20 years, he has laid on his side, wrapped in a red fleece, covered in ice and snow, with his green boots clearly in view. His legs stretch out across the path and many travelers have to awkwardly step over it to continue up the mountain. He was just 28 when he died along with two other climbing partners. Little is known beyond that, but he almost serves as a guardian for fellow adventurers to take care and stay safe while climbing to the top of the world. Number seven, live alligators. Right? By the end of this list, you may get the idea that if you were trapped in the ice, there's no chance you'd that you'd come back from that. Unless you're an alligator. In fact, they have the very odd tendency of, well, see for yourself. Check out this video clip. Imagine seeing an alligator snout just poking out through the ice. Well, now you know better than to assume that they are dead. There is a reason alligators have survived for so long. While semi-frozen, they undergo a process called brumation, where they basically shut down their metabolism and slow down their heart rate, and then just, just like wait for the cold to go away. Imagine if we could do that with winter. Oh man, a lot of my life would be wasted. What about skiing and skating? They can't do that though, so I get it. That's a kind of patience I guess I will never understand. Number six, the icy elevator. Moving away from mountains and ice caps, this next one was a grim discovery made in Detroit in an elevator shaft of all places. In 2009, a dead body was found frozen in ice at the bottom of an elevator shaft, right? They had to use saws to extricate his body. The man's name was Johnny Redding and whether he was pushed or fell down the shaft is yet unknown. But the coroner's report states that he died of a drug overdose, but that still doesn't explain how he ended up there. He was discovered when a few kids were playing ice hockey nearby and at first ignored it, but then they saw that it wasn't just his shoes, but an entire body stuck between two to three feet of water. Very terrifying to discover. Number five, hidden treasure. I don't know whether it's because of Pirates of the Caribbean or because of the Curse of Oak Island, because I, I love that show, I love watching that with my dad, but I know I'm not the only one who's dreamed of just finding treasure in their backyard or while well, scuba diving somewhere. In January 1966, Air India Flight 101 crashed in the summit of Mont Blanc, the highest mountain in France. 117 people died and many recovery attempts were abandoned and it took 50 years for a massive secret to be revealed. The wreckage sadly was pulverized when it hit the mountain, but stuck within several layers of ice was the treasure of a lifetime. A small case packed with $246,000 worth of emeralds, rubies, and sapphires. The climber who found them stand-up guy. He was an honest man and tried to find the owners. So they were kept in a vault until the right owner could be found. Not only did this ice reveal a treasure trove of gems, but also a damn gem of a human being because who on earth wouldn't have just kept them? He is the guy that would run up behind you if you dropped your $5 or left your laptop behind. Man, the world needs more people like him. Let us know if you would have kept them or done what he did in the comments. What kind of person are you? Let us know. Number four, the woolly rhino. We've heard of the woolly mammoth, but a woolly rhino? Maybe you've heard about that before on our channel, but hey, let's talk about Sasha. Affectionately named Sasha, this baby woolly rhino may be the key to discovering its placement in the mammal family tree. Sasha roamed the earth 10,000 years ago and is the only complete specimen ever found of the species. It roamed the cold, dry mammoth steppe region from Spain to Siberia, and there it perished in until a hunter and a businessman discovered her. Sasha was donated to the Yakutian Academy of Sciences in Russia and carries the weight of completing the genome on her shoulders. If they do complete it, it could mean that they may be able to bring them back, but kind of as the same thing as the lion cubs, should we, should we not? Let us know what you think in the comments. And coming up to our top three, please let us know if you like this video by pressing that lovely little thumb button and subscribe as well as press that little bell so you get a notification every single time a new video comes up. We post so many a day and it's just, 
it's a challenge to keep up, so let us know. Number three, Otzi the Iceman. Otzi the Iceman is perhaps one of the most famous icy discoveries ever made, partly because he has aided in developing our knowledge of life in the Copper Age, and the other half because people think he is cursed. Kind of like Tutankhamun. After thousands of years alone, a couple of hikers at last discovered him in 1991 by accident. He still had his clothing and his equipment while he slept in the Val Sinal Valley Glacier. The last time Otzi was alive was over 5,300 years ago, which means he is older than the pyramids and Stonehenge, though he might have lived longer if he hadn't have been murdered. Which could be the reason as to why many believe he is cursed. Hmm. Several people have passed away mysteriously and under suspicious circumstances, whoever were in direct contact with the corpse and the bodies keep stacking. So who knows? Number two, disease. I know, viruses are probably the last thing you want to hear about right now. I know it is for me, but I couldn't ignore this. It was too cool and it had to be on this list. Though there are a lot of things no longer living trapped beneath the ice, except for alligators just chilling there, there are other more dangerous things that simply wait. I'm not talking about massive monsters or mythical creatures, something much smaller and far more insidious. Scientists are currently concerned that some of the world's most deadly viruses might resurface, but it's not really a case of might, it's a when will they resurface? In August 2016, the nightmare became reality. A boy died and 20 other people were hospitalized because they were infected with anthrax, a disease that revived due to melting permafrost. That's just one example. There are tons more that could be released including the bubonic plague and smallpox, plus with antibiotic resistance, who knows if we will be able to survive them this time. And last but not least, this one is so fascinating to me and very controversial, the Inca Maiden. One of the best preserved mummies ever found and not by any special kind of embalming process but because of how they were frozen. It was just because of the natural environment that they were preserved so well. Her body along with two younger ones were discovered looking as if they'd only been dead like two weeks. Not for 500 years. When John Reinhard, a US archaeologist and expedition member said and I quote, a chill went down down my spine the first time I saw her hands because they looked like those of a person who is alive." Unquote. The expeditioners had to battle three days of blizzards to reach the 22,000 foot summit and dig through five feet of rocks and soil. One of the guys had to be lowered down by his ankles to lift out the mummies. Their goal was to get to an Incan burial platform and that's where they found them. You can even see the lice frozen to her scalp and the hairs on her arms. There was even still blood preserved in her veins and her heart. When she defrosted, it actually poured out of her veins like it was still there. Researchers believe they were sent up to the mountain to be sacrificed in order for them to be closer to the gods. A huge honor of the time, not something we necessarily do now. But even crazier still, they were able to find a man from a small village at the foot of Mount Ampato who is her living descendant. Insane. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Molly virus. Back in 2015, French researchers discovered a gigantic virus that they found in a sample of Siberian permafrost. This spherical DNA virus wasn't just any old virus, no, this one was about 30,000 years old. For the virus to survive that long, frozen in ice truly is remarkable and also absolutely terrifying. There is good news, however, it is said that although some refer to this virus as a behemoth, it is said that the new discovery only infects amoebas, which means that it is unlikely to ravage the planet anytime soon. At least we hope. In our number 9 spot today we have Lake Vostok. Many of us have heard of Atlantis, but have you heard of Lake Vostok? This lake is located in Antarctica and it is so huge it's one of the largest lakes in the entire world. The lake not only has a large surface area, but it's also quite deep which only adds to the volume of the lake. It's like the lakiest lake out there and here's the thing about it. It is covered by ice. And not just any ice, but the East Antarctic ice ice sheet, which is just the largest ice sheet in the world. This subglacial lake has ice so thick that we don't really know a lot about what lies beneath it, and the ice has been there for millions of years. But when the first samples of the actual lake water were taken, it became apparent that there may be species in the lake that we know absolutely nothing about. In our number 8 spot today we have the female mummy. Back in 2017, there was a mummy found in Siberia that absolutely rocked the scientific community. This discovery was so remarkable 
remarkable because deep within the permafrost, close to the Arctic Circle, they found the mummified remains of a woman who was roughly 900 years old. Said to have come from the medieval times, this marked the first woman to be discovered in that area, as previously it had been mostly men. It appears as though the mummification part was accidental, but it was quite a surprise to researchers who had thought that they wouldn't find a woman's remains in the area at all. It is said that all of the bodies found in this area belonged to a hunting and fishing civilization, and this discovery gave experts very valuable insight into their lives and the times in which they lived. In our number 7 spot today we have Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus is the highest active volcano in Antarctica, as well as the southernmost active volcano on Earth. Got a lot going on. The volcano has been active for 1.3 million years and it features a lava lake in the inner summit crater that's been present since the early 1970s. You might be thinking, uh, it's a volcano, which surely is like the opposite of ice, right? But as it turns out, this volcano is like the definition of fire and ice. Here you can be sure to find numerous ice fumaroles, which are ice towers that form around the gases that are released or that escape from the vents on the surface. This creates a perfect home, not for many, but for some persevering and adaptable bacteria and fungi. This gives scientists quite the opportunity to study these organisms that can live in this extreme environment that doesn't really provide a lot of resources. In our number 6 spot today we have the Iceman. The mummy of Oatsy, who is also referred to as the Iceman was found in 1991 in the Otsal Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otsi lived around 3000 BC and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Otsi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing the people who helped with the discovery of Otsi are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean, it is said that there were seven deaths in one year alone, so if there is a curse, it's clearly a pretty strong one. It's almost as if disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea that anyone's ever had. In our number 5 spot today we have Europa. We are going off planet for this one. One of Jupiter's moons called Europa has a red tinge to it and in 2001 NASA scientists revealed that it's possible that alien microbes might be responsible for this red color. The surface of this moon is mostly ice but it has been shown that it reflects infrared radiation in a really bizarre way. This means that something is binding it together, but researchers haven't been able to come up with the correct combination of elements and compounds to make the data make sense. There are some bacteria on Earth that can thrive in extreme conditions that also have that red and brown color which could potentially be responsible for the color on this moon. The surface temperature might be too cold for them to survive, but the warmer interior might be where they are located. Some geological activity on the moon could then push them closer to the surface where they are then flash frozen in place. In our number 4 spot today we have P38. In 2018, a team of researchers were using a drone with ground penetrating radar technology when they found something that no one could have predicted. 300 feet deep in the Greenland ground encased in ice was a World War II plane. This P38 lightning fighter plane is actually just one out of eight that were a squadron. This P38 lightning fighter plane was actually just one out of eight that were part of a squadron. This group had all been lost and had crash landings after a blizzard on July 15th, 1942. After locating the fighter plane, researchers were able to then excavate it, but there still remains at least four in this squadron that have yet to be located. In our number three spot today, we have Skeleton Lake. Also sometimes referred to as Mystery Lake, this place is exactly what it sounds like. It's a lake and there's a bunch of skeletons there. Located in the Himalayas, this lake freezes over in the winter months, but when the snow melts, there are various skeletons around the site that become visible around the edges of the lake. There have been many speculations as to how these people died and at one point it was thought that these remains were a result of a pretty legendary event where all in a single group they were killed by a large and violent hailstorm but the leading theory has since changed. Now it is said that the remains actually belong to three distinctly different groups who all died in separate events. At this point the real story of what happened here may just remain a mystery that has left us with a haunting image. In our number 2 spot today we have Luba. This is the name that was given to a baby mammoth. Mummified remains were found frozen and extremely well preserved in ice. Luba would have roamed the earth about 48,000 years ago, which is truly incredible to think about. These mammoth remains were found in 2007, but it was actually a complete accident. The remains were found by a hunter who was out on a frozen peninsula in Russia. But here's where the story takes a bit of a crazy turn. So the man who discovered these remains didn't want to touch her because of a cultural belief that touching a mammoth would cause a bad omen, so he traveled to a nearby town to consult a friend, and this is when they decided to 
contact the authorities. The authorities then flew out to the area to collect the remains, but when they arrived, she had disappeared. The person who found her knew that someone had likely taken her to try and turn a profit, so he began doing some investigations. Long story short, they found the remains outside of a local store, and this is when it was revealed to them that the guy who had found the remains initially, his cousin had stolen them and brought them here in exchange for two snowmobiles. In the end, there was unfortunately minor damage to the body that included dogs having chewed off her right ear, but still the find and discovery was still incredible and she was transported to a museum where she continues to give people a look into a time on earth long ago. In our number one spot today we have the Incan mummy. 20,000 feet above sea level on the edge of a volcano, researchers were startled to find a woman frozen in ice. This Incan mummy is said to have been so well preserved that she even still had lice in her hair. The researchers and doctors who examined her after her discovery were completely baffled at how well preserved she was, so much so that some of her features reminded them of a living, breathing human being. Even down to the extremities, it truly was just remarkable. It is believed that this woman likely met her fate where she was found as a result of sacrifice. Because of her well preserved nature, scientists were able to determine that she was suffering from quite a few ailments, including tuberculosis, which some believe is the reason why she was sacrificed. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have a throwing spear. A throwing spear that was approximately crafted over 10,300 years ago was discovered by Dr. Craig Lee from Montana State University in 2007. It was discovered in northern Wyoming. 10,300 years ago, holy moly. Just saying that is so trippy and hard to wrap my brain around the idea of people existing at that point. But in any case, this spear at first glance appeared just like a stick, but then after closer inspection, he discovered that it was a dart from a throwing spear. At this point, it is the oldest frozen artifact found yet. It's been a source of inspiration for others to continue the hunt for artifacts that are being revealed as a result of melting ice patches, and it certainly has created a sense of urgency for people to get hunting for these unbelievable items. In our number 9 spot, we have the Yukon Treasures. A size 4 moccasin shoe from 1400 years ago was found melting in the Yukon, and my inner shopaholic is super excited about it. So of course I had to include it on this list. Along with this shoe, two other items were found. A barbed antler projectile point from about 1200 years ago, and throwing darts from 9000 years ago. Apparently they were found by a husband and wife in 1997 who were hunting doll sheep in the Yukon mountains when they smelt something extremely strange. It was dung. Yes poop from a caribou. But the thing is, caribou hadn't been in this area for many, many years, so they decided to inspect it. <laughs> Naturally? <laughs> I wouldn't. Anyways, I guess they discovered that the poop was from thousands of years ago that had frozen into ice, and close behind it were these artifacts that had melted along with it. Pretty wild. In our number 8 spot, we have animal hair rope. While out exploring the mountaintops of western Mongolia, archaeologist and researcher Isaac Hart of the University of Utah discovered something quite interesting that he felt would truly help with discovering more about the Mongolia people in ancient times. They discovered a finely woven piece of animal hair rope. This rope was first thought to have been dropped in the ice recently, however, after scientists performed some radiocarbon tests on it to see how old it was, it was pretty Proven to be more than 1500 years old. Wow, that's some old rope. In our number seven spot, we have horn curls. On this same trip, looking for more artifacts, Isaac Hart found some Argali sheep skulls and horn curls from 1500 years ago, which were stacked in a pile by ancient hunters. And this finding completely discounted some old assumptions about the Mongolian people in the past. They were long thought to be herding societies, but these findings showed that perhaps they were big hunters on mountain ice. Wow, sometimes just talking about this just makes me feel super grateful to be alive today. Although we are all wimps now, just going outside when it's cold, you know, I'm already looking for the outdoor heater. Where's the outdoor heater? 
What are we in ancient times? In our number six spot, we have Iron Age tunic. Apparently, as Norway's glaciers begin to melt, archaeologists are beginning to uncover a ridiculous amount of ancient treasures, and some say it is about 2,000 plus items to date. One of the most notable items, in my opinion, is some recovered clothing that was found. Honestly, not one item is better than the other. They all tell a story from the past and help us better understand how mountain populations lived. But still, I think it is so cool to see that they found some clothing that's approximately from 300 AD, an Iron Age tunic to be exact. That's not that old though compared to some of the other items that were found on this dig that were approximately 4,000 years old, but still, pretty cool. And one of the older items that was found is in our number five spot today, which is the walking stick. Now this item also is not as old as some of the throwing darts that were found, but it's so unique and cool that I had to put it on the list. It's not just any old walking stick. It's a walking stick with runic inscription. Whoa, so cool. I actually have rocks with ruins on them at home that I bought from like a new AG store and I love to look at them. Ruins are truly fascinating and quite beautiful. So I'm a big believer in symbology and the energy and power infused in symbols. So anyways, when I saw this recovered walking stick from the 11th century AD, I kind of freaked out and needed to share. In our number four spot, we have arrowheads. This is actually so cool. The entire video has been so fun to research, but finding this out was very interesting. I definitely need to go to museums more. I don't think I knew that I enjoyed history so much. Anyways, in 2003, a hiker was walking in a mountain pass near Sion, Switzerland, when he came across some treasures. Not gold, sadly, but what he found were items that are arguably way cooler from a Stone Age hunter from over 3,000 years ago. They were fragments of a bow, an arrow case, arrowheads, and leg coverings, all believed to be revealed due to the ice in the glaciers melting due to the rapidly changing climate. Pretty crazy. Imagine just going for a hike and discovering some ancient artifacts. I bet you there will never be a more interesting moment in your life. Although fine, the birth of your future child could be fairly special too. In our number three spot, we have the Viking whisks. Technically not considered ancient artifacts, but I thought this was cool and it needed an honorable mention. The melting of glaciers in Norway has actually revealed a lost mountain pass, and with it, hundreds of Viking artifacts have been discovered. The pass was discovered back in 2011, as ever since, the glaciers have continued to melt and more and more artifacts have been recovered. Covered. The archaeologists believe the pass was used from the Roman Iron Age 300 AD to the Viking Age 1000 AD. From horseshoes to sled fragments to wooden needles to wooden whisks, all kinds of artifacts have been recovered. One of the most unique items include a Viking mitten and a blue textile rug. Wow, imagine finding a rug frozen on a mountain. Also, it's just wild to think that the Vikings had rugs. All I can think of when I think of Vikings is war, so it's probably just me and my limited imagination due to my limited knowledge of history. In our number two spot, we have arrowheads. Over 100,000 artifacts were recently uncovered in a place called Nunalik in Alaska. These artifacts belong to the Yupik peoples who lived there. There have been stories told over many centuries of a gruesome massacre that occurred during the bow and arrow war days, which was a series of long, brutal battles. Up until recently, the area had been frozen in the subsoil known as permafrost. The most notable items that were found were the slate arrow points that further proved the stories that have been told about these war times. Although these items aren't technically ancient, they are truly a wonder for archaeologists to discover and I thought it needed to be on this list. In our number one spot, we have an ancient lunchbox. A 3,500 year old lunchbox was discovered in Switzerland in the Swiss Alps. No, it didn't have a 3,500 year old cheese sandwich in it, but it did have traces of ancient cereal. Whoa, some ancient dude was just walking around the Alps eating an ancient version of Lucky Charms. The lunchbox is a Bronze Age wooden container and apparently the food traces were of wheat and barley or rye grains. The lunchbox was made from Swiss pine and its rim was made from willow sewn together with European larch twigs. It was found in a melting ice patch in 2012. That's incredible. Probably my fave find on this list, but anything to do 
with food just makes me excited. Excuse me as I go pour myself a bowl of Lucky Charms. Feel free to join me if you like. Number 10, the missing link. According to a study posted by Cardiff University, scientists think they have finally found the missing link that foreshadows the ice age, and it's a little too real. What did they know before? Well, scientists knew that ice age cycles developed due to periodic changes in the Earth's orbit. The small variations in solar energy set off massive shifts in Earth's climate, but how remained a mystery. Well, now scientists think it has everything to do with the melting of the icebergs. Ha ha ha! Well, isn't that interesting? When the Earth is in the right position and icebergs begin to melt away from Antarctica, immense volumes of fresh water move into the Atlantic Ocean away from the Southern Ocean. Therefore, the Southern Ocean gets saltier and massive changes in circulation patterns pull CO2 out of the atmosphere. We know that the less CO2 in the atmosphere, the colder the temperature will be as it reduces the greenhouse effect. Therefore, Earth moves towards ice age conditions. Now, I think we can be a little more scared of the ice caps melting. Number nine, lion cubs. Lion cubs in ice? Well, yes, yes, indeed. The world is strange and wonderful, and it was once covered in a lot of ice. Unyan and Dina were the first cave lions to be found, and another was found more recently in Yakutia, Russia. Both sets of remains date back to the Ice Age around 12,000 years ago. The species uncovered went extinct 10,000 years ago, and these poor babies died in a really, really sad way. Either their mother died or abandoned them, and the newest cub is so well preserved that you can see how it went to sleep with its little head resting on their. Paw. They also found two other cave lions, Boris and Sparta, in the same area, both perfectly preserved and 18,000 years apart. These two little cubs also helped establish the appearance of cave lions without manes. But the most exciting thing about the remains is that it could be used for cloning now that we've completed the genome. Interesting. Number eight. A wolf head. The wolves we have now are pretty massive, but imagine how big their ancestors must have been. Pavel Efimov was searching for mammoth tusks in Siberia, Russia, when he made an unexpected discovery the head of an Ice Age wolf, perfectly preserved. Its hair, teeth, brain, and ears are fully intact after over, huh, can't believe this, after 40,000 years frozen in the permafrost. These massive creatures were a little over twice the size of modern day wolves and could crush bone with their jaw. Definitely not the most friendly of creatures. It would have been a full grown wolf when it died, but it wasn't killed by humans. Why was the head separated from the body then? Well, scientists believe that it died originally intact, but with the melting and shifting and cracking of the ice, probably separated them. The most exciting part is that now scientists will be able to study the evolution of the modern day wolf. Number seven, disease. I think we've talked about this on the channel before, but here we are again. In August 2016, 21 people were mysteriously infected by anthrax. This is just one terrifying discoveries that scientists have made beneath the ice. Researchers are concerned that some of the world's most deadly viruses are trapped beneath the permafrost from the ice age. And based on this event, they don't seem to be wrong. Not only are they worried about the potential resurfacing of the bubonic plague or smallpox, but something even bigger. Something we may not even have heard of yet. Due to the rapid rate of the ice melting, it is only a matter of time before we figure this out the hard way. We've survived one pandemic. Is another waiting beneath the ice one layer away from our I really hope not. Number six, giant animals. Considering we have started this list off talking about a lot of animals, it seems to make sense that we highlight a theme here. Ever wonder what it would be like to live in the ice age? <laughs> Me neither, except for maybe right now, because it's boiling right now. Oh, it's so hot. Never mind. It's way too hot. We're just gonna take this off. Ironically, it's way too hot in the studio today, so here we are. Why? Because everything was so much bigger, and even imagining that terrifies me. Megafauna were large, oversized animals that lived around the time of the Ice Age. In fact, it was their playground. Not only was there, of course, the woolly mammoth, but massive saber toothed tigers, short faced bears, and of course, the above, massive dire wolves. Plus, you can almost guarantee they were always hungry with food being so scarce. I wonder if people will look back in like a thousand years from now and think about how small our animals are. But believe me, from giant Giant wombats that could be mistaken for bison to killer birds. Not a place we would want to live. But they also had some unique survival skills. For instance, the Ice Age rhino was believed to have a hat, a shovel horn, to help remove snow. 
that's kind of neat. Number five, human revival. Now, considering all the technology we have today, unless we have a day after the tomorrow kind of situation, if we have another ice age, we might be okay. Might. But I am pretty optimistic because Homo sapiens were able to survive the ice age, so why not we? Despite not being hairy or thick skinned, they were resourceful and inventive, relying on traps to catch their dinner. The hunting tools they had would have been limited to stones, knives, and arrowheads. Anything more complicated would have been really, really, really rare. So instead, they used traps, and this is where it would get kind of gruesome. Once their prey would fall prey to whatever traps were sent, the men would surround the injured creature and maul it to death. Hey, when you're hungry, you're hungry. And in a dog eat dog world, it's a privilege to care about how you will kill your next meal. Number four, Mammoth House. What do you do when you don't have bricks and mortar? Well, you build a house out of, um, Bones that you just find lying around. Yeah. According to an article posted in 2020, Russian archaeologists found a massive circle made of the bones of Ice Age creatures. The bones are from creatures that lived over 20,000 years ago. Not only are there five dozen mammoths, but reindeer, horses, bears, wolves, red, and Arctic foxes. And this isn't the only circle like it. There are around 70 Ice Age bone circles in 25 sites in Ukraine and Russia. Some of the bones were still joined together, which meant that they still had meat on their bones when they were added. In the middle, there are wooden poles that were presumably used to support roofs made of animal hides. There is still speculation as to whether they were used for homes, ritual, or storage buildings, but still, a house of bones sounds odd to us, I know, but imagine having to withstand cold without the tech we have now. Ah, <sighs> desperate times call for desperate measures. Number three, mini ice ages. Did you know that we may get a mini ice age before we get a really big one? Like a test run, kind of, if you will. Though they aren't as deadly, they can still cause widespread famine and disease due to failed crops. The last recorded mini ice age happened between the 12th and 14th century, peaking from 1500 to 1850. It mostly took place in the Northern hemisphere of Europe where seas would freeze repeatedly and glaciers would crush whole villages. This happened quite often in places like Switzerland. But even worse, just like in Game of Thrones, they would go whole years, whole years without summer. No thank you. No one quite knows what caused this tiny ice age, but scientists have a couple of ideas. One, that it had something to do with volcanic activity and that it had an effect on the solar energy the earth was receiving. Whatever the reason, it definitely provides yet another explanation as to why the Middle Ages were just so sad. So sad. Number two, more CO2 is a good thing? Hmm. Considering the first point on this list, we know that less CO2 in the atmosphere will lead to colder temperatures, which could mean ice ice baby. But considering the very, very real concept of global warming and the fact that we are injecting so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, could that mean we will stave off an ice age. Well, scientists think this might be so. While we definitely need to figure out how to control our output so other problems don't arise, it could help fight off the next ice age. Right? Weird. There's an upside to everything. According to Cambridge University, although the planetary cycle makes an ice age inevitable, like the seasons, the only way it can happen is if the CO2 level is too low. At this point, we have pumped so much CO2 into the air that even if it all stopped tomorrow, we would still have enough to keep an ice age at bay for at least a thousand years. However, if we keep going the way we're going, well, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. <laughs> like, what do you want? Snowball, hot earth. Depends what you like, I guess. How the heck are we gonna get out of this one, you know? And last but not least, the snowball. What's more terrifying than an ice age? A giant snowball. No, not the one that you made to throw at your neighbor. I mean the one that could be our earth. A snowball earth is a very, very terrifying possibility, though probably not as likely. A snowball earth would destroy much of life on earth and sink our entire world into a deep freeze. And it did. The snowball earth was a series of ice ages that occurred during the Neoproterozoic era that were so massive, the entire planet froze over 500 million years ago. Why did it happen? Well, scientists from MIT speculate that it was due to a drop in heat so steep that it triggered a runaway effect. The ice expanded so quickly, the earth didn't have time to recover. This drop in temperature might have been prompted by several volcanic eruptions that happened in quick succession. Scientists are unsure as to whether humans could make this happen, but if it did, 
we wouldn't be able to stop it. At the speed at which the Earth's atmosphere is changing because of us, who knows what could happen? It could go so far, it goes the other way around. You just don't know. Kicking off the list at number 10, Arctic hyenas. Only a few years ago, scientists discovered teeth. Yeah, how fun is that? Ancient teeth from Arctic hyenas. Lovely. Now, when you think of hyenas, you would never imagine that they once roamed over Europe and Asia five million years ago, right? That's not what we think about when we imagine them scary and drooling in our brains. Remains from these Arctic beasts have been found all over the world, not just the Yukon permafrost. Evolutionary biologist Jack Sung studies prehistoric carnivores, and he knew within minutes that these recent Yukon molars belong to Arctic hyenas, aka Chasmoporthetes. Number nine, frozen treasure. As far as frozen treasure goes, this is a very recent discovery. We don't find these often or ever, as a matter of fact. Yeah, treasure frozen in ice. This sounds like something from Ocarina of Time. I'm so excited. Back in 2013, an anonymous mountain climber, can't imagine why they chose to stay hidden, they stumbled across a box filled with jewels jammed in the ice. Yeah, hear what I just said, a box of jewels in ice. They had to like breathe on it a bit, <sighs> melt it up, and then finally pull it out. But alas, once they reported it to the French officers, this box contained around 100 precious gems. Precious gems. <laughs> This was quite the find. Emeralds, sapphires, rupees, you name it. The box was worth 300,000 US dollars, roughly. I find a 20 on the ground, I'm calling in sick. Game over. Where did this treasure come from? Well, since it was discovered on Mont Blanc, officials were able to trace the lost gems back to an Air India flight that crashed on the mountain back in 1966. The lives of 117 passengers were sadly lost, and because of the conditions, it's been next to impossible to recover anything from the mountain, especially that long ago, right? Somehow, these family gems were able to see the light again, and yes, before you even ask, the owner did return the gems. Only the thing is, two families claimed the goods, so. Someone's not telling their truth, my friend. Someone's lying, that, that means lying, right? I never knew what that meant. I don't know, I saw someone do it and I was like, I like that sound. Interestingly enough, in 2014, a French treasure hunter named Daniel Roche found 50 more pieces of jewelry from the same glacier. So yeah, the world's melting, but we're also finding gold, so. Eh. Number eight, Western camel bones. Scientific name being Camelops hesternus. <laughs> it's a Harry Potter spell, turns into a camel. Camelops hesternus. Meaning, yesterday's camel in Latin, these bones first appeared in 2008 when gold miners were working in Hunter Creek, just 60 miles away from the Alaskan border, when they suddenly stumbled across these massive bones. The last time these bones were operating, I guess attached to some meat, was 75 to 125,000 years ago. The remains were in such great condition because of the awful surrounding conditions, right? It was so cold that scientists could still extract DNA. And that DNA told us that 10 million years ago, roughly, Western camels split from modern day camels. They were like, hey, it's not working out. You got the two hump thing, I got the one hump. It's cold, you're hot, I don't know. I never called the imaginary camel hot, but here we are. That thumbs up for hot camels. Number seven, blood red waterfalls. I'm sure you've seen this at some point, so I have to of course mention in a part two. If I came across this in the wild, I would be quite alarmed. I would ask some questions as well. On the southern side of our planet, there's a waterfall in Antarctica that is blood red. The edge of Taylor Glacier houses this one of a kind waterfall. It pours right into Lake Bonnie. Now, millions of years ago when sea levels rose up, glaciers formed at the top of said lake. So this melting water that's slowly leaking out from, you know, a quarter a mile deep, this water is three times saltier and apparently three times scarier. When the iron rich water reaches the air, it looks bloody, therefore scary. I'll put my hands back down now, let's move on. Number six, giant beaver skull. So the Yukon permafrost, it's a hot spot. Ironically, it seems, for fossils. Lots of ancient animals stuck in time and in great condition, luckily for us. Scientific name for this one is Castroides ohianus. Sure. That sounded like the closest it'll ever be. This giant beaver was on average larger than us humans. They were massive. As Jurassic Park as this thing looks, it only ate pond weeds, which is pretty hilarious. You would think otherwise looking at it, right? One of the largest rodents in history, and they were probably just really cute, and they ate little plants. 50,000 years ago, they didn't chomp on trees, just weeds. Nice, we like that. Go eat all the weeds. I hate when they touch my feet when I'm swimming in lakes. Like others on this list, they eventually moved north. They followed the ideal conditions to survive in, and that led them ultimately to their icy grave that is now the Yukon permafrost, where we go, Wow, 
more teeth. Number five, Antarctica Pyramid. Over on our history channel, Bumblebee, I talk about the pyramids of Egypt a lot. Maybe a little too much. Once I heard about pyramids in Antarctica, I had to know what was going on. Back in 2016, a mountain in Antarctica was trending online. And we all immediately thought that it was evidence of an ancient civilization because that's what we want to see, right? That's what we're all waiting for. We're like, James Webb, please show us something scary. Eric Rignot, a professor of Earth System Sciences at the University of California, reached out to Live Science when this was all unfolding, adding that, quote, pyramid shapes are not impossible. Many peaks partially look like pyramids, but they only have one or two faces like that. Rarely four. Yeah, that's all it is, just a natural pyramid. Or maybe it's aliens, who knows? I'm leaning towards the latter of the two. Number four, 90 million year old rainforest. Back in 2020, while we were all catching up on Ozark, disappointing finale, fossil traces in West Antarctica were found. Now this time it wasn't a giant beaver or a bloody waterfall from back in time, I don't know. This time it was kinda nice. This time it was an ancient rainforest. 90 million years ago when dinosaurs were once walking around, Antarctica was once a paradise. Right? a sight to see. Researchers compare Antarctica in the Cretaceous period to New Zealand today, right? It was hot, it was gorgeous, with most days on an average of 12 degrees Celsius, like Seattle, right? Some hot days and then some Seattle days. I love how scientists compare eras with modern day city temperatures. Oh, the Ice Age? Oh, a lot of Regina energy there. Yeah, a lot of Western Canada, very cold, not ideal for dinosaurs. But apparently it was a paradise, so we missed out. So cold. Number three, meteorite. For this one, we're gonna switch it up, right? Taylor McWaters, I like to jazz it up every now and then. This time, scientists found ice in a meteorite, not rock in ice. Yeah, little flip flip. That's always a good time. James Webb is about to show us how much water is in space and personally, I'm not ready for it. Back in 1990, the actor 094 meteorite was discovered in the Algerian mountains. The rock was dated back to 4.6 billion years ago. So scientists studied the meteorite with synchrotron radiation based X-ray nanotomography. That sentence was choppy because I couldn't say it all in one go, obviously. This led scientists to find evidence of tiny pores. Pores believed to have been fossilized ice crystals. Now these pores may have come from when the meteorite crossed this snow line out in space. The snow line is a sphere around the sun and it's the exact point where ice on meteorites melts, right? That's the snow line, the more you know. This study was to hopefully find out where water comes from in the galaxy, and it seems that it came from a lot further than we all thought. I got goosebumps saying that, I didn't like that. James Webb stuff today, I'm like, oh, we're so small. Number two, Grasshopper Glacier. Yeah, if you're not a fan of bugs, you can go ahead and skip to number one. I won't take it personally. I'll save some bits for that one too. A glacier in Montana is home to many grasshoppers and locusts. Yeah, locusts, that's a fun word. Imagine heading to a glacier and you forget bug spray. Ah, what a fool you are. Appropriately named Grasshopper Glacier, the mile-long glacier near Crook City holds the remains of extinct grasshoppers. Yeah, they're not alive, don't worry. They're just frozen and then stuck looking at you like this. That's better. These poor guys were traveling to find new life and they must have got caught up in a blizzard a long time ago. Now they're stuck here for another few hundred years. This reminds me of those suckers that have a gross bug in the center, you know? It's like a bug. Why do people buy those? I would never buy them, that's so gross. Number one, fish eat fish. If you know anything about me is that I'm not a fan of lakes. Not at all, no. Oceans, sure, if I can see my feet, we're grooving, okay, we're laughing. If I'm looking down in goggles and I can't see shit, I'm out of the lake. I don't even strap them on my head, I just put my eyes in them and rest them on the water. This video went viral not too long ago and it, it's very real. These two brothers were fishing on Indiana's Wawasee Lake and they saw a pike eating a bass, only both parties were completely still. Both parties were already dead. Both were completely frozen. How epic. What happened? How did this, how are they stuck like this? They posted the photo originally and nobody believed that it was real. So they had to follow up and post a video where they actually removed this scene of events from the ice. Yeah, I would think this is fake too. This looks like a life lesson somewhere that has to be told. It's a fish eating a fish frozen, you know? There's bigger fish out there. There's smaller fish out there. Sometimes fish freeze. I don't know, I'll do like nine more. I don't know what the message is. Number 10, Scimitar cat bone. Right off the hop, there have only been a few Scimitar cat fossils found in history, period. So already, this is a good one, right? We love rare finds. I'm into Pokemon Go, so this is like, oh, a Scimitar cat bone. Nice, add that to the collection. The Homotherium latidens lives again. Back in 2011, a bone of the beast was found on a Dominion Creek mining site right next to Dawson City in Yukon. Yeah, you wanna make fun of Canadians for living in the cold? Well, joke's on you, pal. We have frozen Scimitar cat bones. Yeah, in your face. 
in your face. Researchers at Copenhagen sequenced its genome and its parents were only distantly related. So this was a rare cat while it was alive, let alone found frozen 47,000 years later in 2011. We love it. Number nine, the oldest ice on the planet. They say you're as cold as ice, but never as old as ice. Let's change that, let's make a new phrase. Why not? Scientists are digging up ice in Antarctica. There's pretty much nothing else to dig up, so obviously. Millions of years of ice hides in there, so there's of course millions of ancient secrets. John Higgins, a geochemist at Princeton, believes that there's five million year old ice still intact. And I wanna lick it. I wanna see what it tastes like, you know what I mean? Just ready to probe. Weird to say that and then immediately the probe thing. Let's, we'll do one or the other. Lick ice and then probe it? I'm like, who is this guy? One group is claiming to have found eight million years old ice, but climatologist Eric Wolf from the University of Cambridge says, my attitude is that I accept that it's old ice. I don't know if it's exactly 8 million, but I accept that it's old ice. Yeah, scientists are beefing about Ice Age, not the movies, like the age of the, you get it. There have been way too many of those movies, eh? It's like seven now. Number eight, frozen bird. Back in 2018, an extremely well-preserved bird was found in northeastern Siberia, near the village of Balayagora. The bird itself was quite hidden, which explains its incredible preservation. It was found 150 meters into an ice tunnel, and the fastest Fascinating thing here, other than of course, you know, oh my god, a mummified bird, is that it looks like it died a week ago, right? If I found this, I wouldn't look twice, to be honest. I'd be like, ooh, and then I keep walking, you know, one of those. This bird froze 48,000 years ago. It's a long time, he's been dead. RIP, RIP a thousand times, my little dude. Studying the bird's DNA has given researchers insight on the end of the last ice age. We love it, we love new info in the shape of dirty old birds. Nice. Number seven, ice worms. This is the Dune sequel you didn't know you wanted. Here we go. Around 24,000 years ago, these rotifers, or real creatures, or ice worms, they live in freshwater environments. They've been on our planet for millions of years, so it was only a matter of time before they came back to life. Yeah, that's their secret, Cap. They're immortal. Researchers have been studying these little guys for a while, and in the past, they found that modern rotifers could freeze and then come back to life 10 years later. Yeah, a, a microscopic worm with a buzz saw as a mouth can come back to life. The more you know. Hit that thumbs up on most amazing top 10. I'm so scared. A year ago, these ice age worms were found 12 feet deep under permafrost in Siberia's Alizea River. These ones came back to life after 24,000 years. Must be some tuck everlasting water around them or something, I don't know. They're built different. Number six, viruses. Before we get into the mummified mammoth cubs, we gotta talk about some concerning finds, of course. Just over a year ago in China, scientists discovered ancient viruses. These samples came from the Tibetan Plateau and these samples were originally collected back in 2015. The contents, however, they date back to around 14,400 years ago, long before Captain America went into the ice. This is some ancient stuff right here. So dust, gases, and of course viruses over that long accumulate and glaciers just, they just soak it all in layer after layer, just growing, getting bigger and stronger. Well, not necessarily anymore, but you get it. That is until scientists come in with a few mega drills. Now we're finding dinosaurs and it's fascinating. Except for, you know, when you find 33 ancient viruses in the ice. We don't like that. Yeah, 33 viruses. That's like two more than my family computer had growing up. That's a lot of viruses. Four of these viruses typically infect bacteria and the rest were novel, which means that it's never been seen before. How neat is that? Novel viruses. Just what the world needs, right? Oh, God. Number five, preserved wolf pup. This little lady went into the ice 57,000 years ago. I bet she had no idea she'd ever see the sun again until now. Here we go. Discovered in Yukon, Canada, Zur is the most complete wolf mummy that has ever been found in history, ever. She's incredibly intact. She was discovered in 2016 by a gold miner while they were blasting water at frozen mud. They thought it was treasure, but really it was just this little shiny lady instead. She's quite old to us, but when she went into to the ice, x-rays tell us she was only six weeks old. It's pretty sad. X-rays also show that she loved fish. She had a belly full of fish. She was eating good until she froze. Sad. Number four, underneath Thwaites Glacier. We've seen some fascinating stuff here on Most Amazing Top 10, specifically underwater footage. I can't do that, but they love giving me those lists. I get nice and anxious doing those ones. This is footage from the bottom of an Antarctic glacier. This is incredible. This is something we shouldn't have been able to see in our lifetime. This glacier is the size of Florida, okay? So if it collapses, our sea levels could rise 10 feet. So yeah, let's drill a hole through the middle and see what happens. We love it, all in the name of science. This was back in 2019. Researchers drilled 2,300 
100 feet through the Thwaites Glader and dropped a robot with the camera down. This is the first time in history we've seen the grounding zone of Thwaites Glacier. Lead scientist Brittany Schmidt says this project is a dream come true. It's her walking on the moon moment. There's only one meter of space between the bottom of the glacier and the rocky seafloor. So you're seeing the bottom of a continent, basically, like in Smash Bros, the very bottom of that floating arena. That's it, right here, underwater. I'm so scared. I feel so small looking at this. Would you swim underneath it, Chris? No, I wouldn't either. I would do this and then go back through that. And yo, it's deep too. And it's like, literally like it's like a triangle at the bottom and it's like the, you see the ocean floor is like right there. I'm like, this is actually really scary. It gets my heart going. I can't do this I'm afraid of lakes and fish and ghosts. Number three, Europa Cryobot. We've talked about Jupiter's moon on this channel often for some reason. Apparently there's a lot of going on up there. But now we found traces of water on the icy shell of the moon, which is fascinating in general because water in space, I mean, hello, have you seen Alien or Aliens or any movie in space? The part that really has NASA's attention here is the tectonic activity beneath the icy shell, meaning that somewhere in the middle, there could be warm water flowing. Yeah, there's a spa. You could just flow. There's a lazy river on this moon. We love it. One of the only ways to get under that thick shell of ice and find out what's really going on is Valkyrie. Yeah, not the superhero from Thor. She's a cryobot that NASA created specifically for this mission. Yeah, a little pricey, but she's doing the trick. This machine is capable of melting through layers and layers of ice. A prototype was tested recently in Alaska and the results were promising because, you know, it, was, it worked. So yeah. This cryobot is capable of crawling through eight kilometers of ice a year. So while we do tests here on Earth, we're just gonna keep finding more fascinating mummies or disgusting, scary things like viruses. <laughs> one of the two, it's science. Hey, we're doing our best. Number two, Project Ice Worm. This one has no actual worms in it. Just so you know, that was the gross one up there. This is more of a government one. Here we go. As a Canadian, this secret project sounds like the worst one on this list. Ah, oh, it's so cold. I'm sick of the cold. Had it. Back in the 1960s, under the Greenland ice sheet, the US Army started to build mobile nuclear missile launch sites. Yeah, code name was Project Iceworm. And now we're still finding a whole bunch of gadgets and bad stuff there. So it's, they didn't do a great job cleaning up. The idea here with the project is that they would be close enough they could hit targets within the Soviet Union, right? That was the whole point. This project was called Project Iceworm, but there was also another project, a little secret one, called Camp Sentry. This one had to be done first. Camp Sentry was a network of underground tunnels and places for workers to stay, like a kitchen, a hall, supply rooms, communication centers, all good stuff like that. There's also a nuclear power plant, and this was kept from the Danish government for seven years. So yeah, some secret nuclear activity. We always gotta talk about that on Most Amazing Top 10. Back in 1966, the project was canceled because of shifting ice. Or was it? There's still some activity going on over there. No one knows what's up. Thought I'd get that in your ear before we do our big bad number one. Here we go. And finally, coming in at number one, preserved mammoth cub. In 2010, a mummified mammoth cub was discovered in Siberia, right off the coast of Oyogos. Named after a nearby village, Yuka, the newfound cub is now the best preserved mammoth discovered in history. This was a fascinating find that should have never been seen again, let alone seen in such great condition. Guy looks like he was in Ice Age, like the movie Ice Age. He looks great. But that's not the end for the woolly mammoth. No, it was announced only months ago that a team of scientists and entrepreneurs over at a company called Colossal are planning to bring the Colossal Woolly Mammoth back to life. Here we go. Imagine driving and you see one of these crossing the street. You're like, I guess we'll wait. The last mammoth to walk on the planet was alive around 10,500 years ago. But what if they were alive today? What's the whole point, right? Why are we doing this? Colossal raised over $15 million and they're now working on reviving the woolly mammoth to ideally decelerate the melting of the Arctic permafrost and to ideally save modern elephants from extinction. And of course, to advance CRISPR editing because you know, we can, why not? Hey, let's bring this back to life because CRISPR editing, the classic CRISPR. Mm -hmm. 